By the time my shift ends, I'm ready to head back home and prepare dinner. I'm too tired to take the long way to the train station, so I walk through my usual route, the one where I pass Divinity. I really hope I don't come across the guys from yesterday, especially the one who threatened me. There's no one in sight as I make my way past the academy. Glancing over at the prestigious school, I notice a boy lying on the grass next to one of the big bushes. It's kind of weird for a divinity student to be on campus at this hour, not to mention lying alone on the lawn. My mind tells me I shouldn't get involved, but my gut tells me to check on the person at least. Sighing, I take my bag off and throw it over the gate. I look around to make sure no one's around and then proceed to climb the gate. It's a lot taller than it looks, and definitely higher once I get a look from the top. I'm carefully trying not to harm my balls or manhood while I make my way over the pointy metal and finally get onto the other side. Coming down is a lot easier. Now that my feet are on the ground, I hurry towards the body. Hey, are you okay? As I look closer, I realize the person in front of me is the guy with glasses from yesterday. His uniform is a mess. The shirt is opened, exposing his chest, and his pants are unzipped and unbuttoned, exposing his gray briefs. There's a red mark on his cheek, grip marks on his wrists, blood all over his lips, and two hickeys on his lower neck. I try to shake him a bit. Hey! Can you hear me? The guy slowly opens his eyes and looks at me. What happened? Do you want me to call for help? His eyes go wide as he grabs onto my arm with a tight grip. Don't call anyone, I'm fine. You call this fine? What the hell happened? It's nothing you should concern yourself with. You shouldn't even be on this side of the gate. Seriously? I climbed my ass over that huge gate just to be greeted by your ungrateful ass? No one asked you to help me. I glare at him the same way he glares at me. I can imagine sparks flying between us. My focus moves onto his bloody lip. From the look of it, it was done by an overly rough kiss. I stand up and walk over to my bag. Searching through it, I come across the packet of tissues I have and take one out. As I make my way back over to him, he's already zipped up his pants and is almost unbuttoning up his shirt. He looks up at me with a scowl, but I ignore it and bend down next to him. Here, take this. No thank you. I click my tongue in annoyance. Without really thinking, I cup his cheeks with one hand and clean his lower lip with the tissue. To my surprise, he doesn't fight back, but instead averts his gaze and lets me continue. We stay silent for the next minute until I let him go and I lean away. Can you stand? I ask. I said I was fine. He slowly grabs his bag and stands up. I watch as he walks over to the gate and slides a card into the machine next to the big metal door. It beeps, and a second later, the gate opens. He looks back at me. The gate stays open for two minutes, so you should hurry and leave. He turns back around and walks off. I do as he says, grab my bag and run out of Divinity's property and onto the sidewalk. Looking to the side, I see the guy idly standing a few feet away with his phone in his hand. Are you getting picked up? He doesn't answer me. I sigh. What the hell am I even doing? Instead of leaving like my mind is telling me to do, I lean against the gate and put my hands in my jean pockets. Why are you still here? I'll leave after you do. I don't know what happened to you, but I want to make sure you're safe now. Are you hoping for some compensation for being a good Samaritan? This guy's asking for a punch in the face. I bite my tongue and brush it off. I don't want to argue with him and waste the last bit of my energy. I didn't climb over the gate because I wanted money. I thought you weren't going to show your face around here anymore. (laughs) Do you really think your boyfriend scared me? I can take him on and his friends. I'm not walking an extra seven blocks to the train station. Hell no. A black Porsche slowly pulls up in front of the guy. The chauffeur, who looks to be around 70 years old, gets out of the car and opens the back door. Before he gets in, he looks back at me. Thank you. Those two words take me by surprise. I can't reply back. He gets into the car as the chauffeur nods towards me and quickly makes his way to the driver's seat. The car drives off, leaving me all alone in front of Divinity. I kind of feel like smacking myself for thinking he looked cute when he thanked me. Maybe Jin is right. I'm lonelier than I thought. Well, I have until Friday to make a decision about Chigusa. Leaning away from the gate, I make my way towards the train station, wondering if I'll ever see that guy again.